Are you thinking of making the move to Florida? Well, be prepared to flip your wardrobe completely upside down and trade your business attire for shorts and flip-flops, even on a Monday. And that's just the tip of the palm tree. Now, in today's video, we're going to be going over some surprising aspects about moving here to Florida that you might not know. Let's get into it. One of the very first things you'll notice about living here in Florida is that the business attire is a little bit different than a lot of other areas of the country. When I first got my real estate license, I bought a couple of very nice suits so that I can go interview and talk to builders and just try to figure out where I was going to go. I was leaving the military, so I had that like dress discipline on me, and I was trying to take that over into the civilian world. And what I realized is the very first person I interviewed with was sitting in shorts, flip-flops, and a t-shirt just like I'm wearing right now. And that seems to be kind of the general consensus here in Florida where I thought, you know, hey, I'm gonna get into the civilian sector, I'm gonna get into this professional job, I need to dress professionally. And although I did do that for about eight to nine months, something like that, after I got my license, joined a brokerage, like started learning everything I needed to learn, that eventually faded out and now my daily attire is this. And it's funny because I meet real estate agents all across the country that, you know, will kind of look at my attire and go, I'm confused. This is what you're wearing on your appointments. This is what you're wearing with people. Yes, the attire is a little bit different here. This has nothing to do with real estate or anything like that. It is the general consensus for a lot of the jobs that you'll see here out in Florida. And the overall just demeanor of people in their attire is that casual is generally better. And this also means that if you are going to dinner, there's a good chance you may have been out at the beach, you may have been out in the sun. So you might even be going to a nice fancy restaurant that requires dinner reservations. And a lot of times they're perfectly okay with shorts, flip-flops, and a t-shirt. So if you know wearing suits is not your kind of style, then Florida might be the perfect place for you. One of the other things that I realized that I, this is going to sound really ridiculous, but but there's water everywhere, particularly in our area here in the Panhandle, everywhere. And I'm not just talking about the beach or the Gulf of Mexico. I'm talking there's the Gulf, there's the Sound, there's a bay, there's a harbor, there's canals, there's lakes and riparian lakes and rivers and creeks. Like It's just water everywhere. Florida is a very interesting state in that manner which gives us a great advantage over most of the states here in the country is that we have picturesque views everywhere you go. It's like I said, not just the beach. If you're looking at the sunset over the harbor, over the bay, over the bayous, over the sound, you know, sitting on a lake in the middle of the day, sitting, you know, going tubing down a creek, whatever, we have water everywhere and it makes for a, just a very aesthetic feel all across Florida. And because we have water everywhere, you know what that means? We have boats everywhere. And not just big boats with trolling motors and yachts and pontoon boats. We have everything. So we're talking paddle boards and kayaks, tubes, you know, just a ton of watercraft out here in the water because that is one of the main things people come here to Florida for is so that they can enjoy the water life. And before you think, oh, well, if I move to Florida, I'm going to have to buy a boat. Well, not necessarily. All you really need to do is make friends with somebody that has a boat. Or if you don't plan on going out that much, you can rent them every single time you want to go out. And that is generally a little bit cheaper than paying for the boat yourself. You know, the payments and everything are going to be pretty hefty and you're going to have to pay those whether you're using that boat or not. Whereas if you just go out on the water five, six times, a year like I do, we just rent a boat. This way we don't have that payment going on every single month. And for those of you that like the convenience of having different types of boats and you don't want to rent them each time, we also have boating clubs out here, which I didn't find out about until I lived here, like almost a decade, that they have literally like whole clubs meant to boats where you basically pay an initial fee, you know, 10, $20,000 is generally where that kind of falls, at least here in our area. And then you pay a monthly fee from there based on how often you would like to rent a boat. And then they'll, most of them will have a plethora of different boats. You want to go fishing? We've got fishing boats. Okay, cool. You want to haul a bunch of people to Crab Island and go enjoy the day and have some drinks and listen to some music. Cool. We got pontoon boats. We've got jet skis. We've got whatever you want in these boat clubs. And the cool thing is that $10,000, $20,000 membership fee, at most of the boat clubs, you get to resell that. So it's not necessarily a hefty cost. I mean, it is right up front, but overall, when you get it back at the end of whenever you're done with the boats, it's not that bad of a deal. And of course, because we have all the boats and all the water, that comes with the inherent 
anglers, the fishermen that are out there, and they're everywhere. You can't drive across a bridge or at some sort of body of water most of the time without seeing somebody with a line in the water. So if you enjoy fishing, Florida is obviously a really good place to do it. And there is such a wide variety of fish that you can catch here from freshwater to saltwater. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I'm not a fisherman myself, so I'm kind of speaking on other people's experience here, but the fishermen that I know absolutely love it. And of course, with all this fishing means we have a lot of fish here. Now, I must have lived here probably close to seven or eight years before I really started experimenting with some of the great seafood that we have out here. See, a lot of the restaurants have seafood that is coming right off of the boat, right into the kitchen and then they're cooking that up and serving it or you know in certain cases not cooking it up you know if you're getting like sushi or something like that but it's coming straight out of the water it's the freshest fish you'll ever get and I'm actually really upset that I spent so long not touching any of this fish because I was so used to going to restaurants before and seeing like salmon and tuna and then when I moved down here it was like okay cool I start seeing some of the other stuff but I'm like ah salmon and tuna you know I'll eat them I actually like salmon but it's not going to be my go-to if I'm going out to eat generally. Well, eventually I started experimenting and actually trying out some of these other fish, particularly the gulf fish we have out here, you know, the grouper, the redfish. There's a ton of them out here, but those are two of my favorites, especially redfish. As soon as I got my hands on some redfish, I have not stopped eating it since. And I actually really look forward to it, especially if they pour a little bit of that Creole cream on it. You've got to try it when you come down here. And we can't forget about the gulf shrimp, which are about the size of a toddler. Okay, I'm kidding. They're not that big, obviously, but they are pretty massive. You know, the little popcorn shrimp you get, or even normal shrimp that you get at a lot of restaurants, these gulf shrimp are massive in comparison, and they are absolutely delicious. And because of all the fishing opportunities that we have out here and the fact that it's so close to shore, a lot of people that have uh, charters or fishing companies, what have you, in different parts of the country, they have to go out. Like it is a good hour long trek to get out to the water that they need to. But here, because the Gulf of Mexico is so close, it's literally just a couple miles offshore. So they could be out there fishing and they're spending more of their time fishing, which is what makes the money and less of the time on gas and trying to get out there, which makes the prices fairly reasonable for what you're getting. And because of this, we have tons of festivals and fishing competitions and things like that. And that's actually why one of our cities, Destin, Florida, is so aptly named the world's luckiest fishing village. And before I go into some of the other things that surprised me moving down here to Florida, I am going to put all of my contact information up on the screen. If you are considering relocating to Florida anywhere in the state, we can definitely help you. We primarily specialize in the northwest portion of Florida. So if you check out our channel, that's kind of what this entire channel is about. But if you are moving anywhere in Florida and you'd like some help, we can pair you with a real estate professional to help out. Okay, the next thing that really surprised me when I moved here was the local festivals and activities they have out here. There is something going on all the freaking time. Like it is insane. In fact, just on the way here, I drove by something that had a whole bunch of food trucks around it and some sort of like bazaar and stuff going on in the middle of it on a random Sunday. Like it's absolutely crazy. So there's always something going on. And let's get into some of those festivals that they have in case you decide to visit the Northwest portion of Florida. Probably one of the biggest ones we have is Billy Bowlegs. This is a reenactment of a bunch of pirates that tried to take over Destin and Fort Walton. I can't remember which one they landed on first. So the entire festival is them reenacting. We have this giant pirate ship in the harbor of Destin that comes out. They've got these fake cannons that shoot and make a bunch of noise. And they have pirates up on the scaffoldings and everything. It's freaking crazy. And then they come over. They shoot at us a little bit. The mayor runs out with a bunch of musket men. And then they, you know, hit land. And then they chase the mayor all the way through town. And then the mayor starts winning and chases them back to their boats. And they flee away. And it is a good time, not just for families, but for adults as well. Although, if you are going to bring your families, make sure you get out of the parade um, as soon as it's done and don't stick around for the shenanigans because it does become a little bit of a debacle of people drinking and enjoying the day. And so if you don't want your kids to be subjected to that, just make sure you get out of there in time. 
And as I was talking about some of the fishing stuff and fishing competitions, we have a bunch of those out here as well. So if you enjoy watching this or you enjoy seeing the weigh-ins and then come back, you know, the boats come back with these giant marlins or redfish or whatever the competition happens to be, you can go out there, you can watch them weigh it in and you can watch the videos, you know, from the people and stuff. It's just a really good time. And they make an entire festival out of this where, you know, there's food and drink and things to do and all of this stuff while you're waiting for the boats to come back in for the competition. And for those of you that like gumbo, this is something that's a little bit new to me. I still haven't fallen in love with gumbo myself personally, but we do have a pretty good gumbo festival. Again, just like most of the other festivals, there's food, drink, things to do for the kiddos, for the adults, adult beverages, and then of course, tons and tons of gumbo. Now, of course, we're living in Florida, so there is a good amount of festivals that include alcoholic beverages. So if that's something that you are into, we have those. We've got great wine festivals. We can do a ton of different wine tastings, some of them from Florida, some of them even from this part of Florida. We have a winery up in Defuniac Springs, just about an hour north of where I'm at right now. And they have their own kind of wines, although it's like mostly like Moscato grapes, which I heard is more of a sweet wine. Uh, so if you're not into that, it might not be the best thing for you. But we have that. We've got things like one of my personal favorites, tacos and tequila. This is literally an entire festival about exactly that, tacos and tequila. You go around, you pay, I don't even remember what it is, 40, 50 bucks for all, you know, all these samples, tons of different tacos. You just keep walking around, get a ton of tacos, eat till your heart's content, drink lots of margaritas or tequila in general. Sometimes it's a shot, sometimes it's in a margarita, sometimes it's a mixed drink, so on and so forth. And it's generally a pretty good time. Now, they do this all over, so it's not just one specific area, but one of my favorite places that they do this is Baytown Wharf. Baytown Wharf is a gigantic resort style, um, I guess like a, just a resort basically, that's got you know golf courses and then a bunch of shopping and it's got like just a great venue for lots and lots of different events. And they put on a great tacos and tequila. And for you beer lovers, we have craft-a-thons out here as well. This is where you basically go out and test all the different types of beers that give you a little cup most of the time on a necklace so you don't lose it. And they just give you a bunch of samples and we get beer from all over. In fact, we generally have 200 plus different vendors out here. In fact, we generally have 200 or more beers at every single one of these events and you get to just walk around. You're always going to run into somebody you know if you've lived here for a little bit and it is generally a pretty good time. I suggest so if you are going to go to maybe make yourself a pretzel necklace or something to give yourself something to snack on because it definitely can uh, get away from you quick, especially in this summer heat that we have here in Florida. Okay, I'm going to pivot back to the outdoor life a little bit. I know we talked about the boating and fishing and stuff like that, which is part of outdoor life, but I wanted to give that a little bit of a break and come back to it. So let's talk about outdoor activities. It was really surprising to me when I moved here just how abundant the outdoor activities are. I, I thought just, I think like a lot of people think when they think Florida is like, oh, it's just boats and jet skis and, and that's kind of it. And there'll, there'll probably be some fishing and maybe some local festivals, but like not at the extent that we have it out here. And for Florida being such a flat state, it's really surprising that we have things like hiking mountain biking, trail riding, trail running, stuff like that. And that's not to mention the different parks we have and of course the infamous white sand beaches. So it's one of the things that the Emerald Coast is known for. It is this small patch of land here in Florida that we call the Emerald Coast and we do that because the water gets this amazing emerald green coloring. Sometimes it's a deep blue. It just kind of depends on the temperature and the time of year and you know how much uh, stuff is in the water. There's basically an algae that kind of like adjusts the water color. It, you can't see it. It's not like there's algae floating anywhere like that. It's microscopic, but it does change the water. And then of course, our signature powder white sand. This stuff is like, like sugar, like dead serious. It is that soft. And they take care of our beaches here at a really high level. Even the, the you know, just citizens that live here are taking care of it. You'll see it every single morning. There'll be people walking around. I used to do it about once a week where I'd go around and just pick up stuff on the beach, you know, just kind of do my little exercise, do my little walk in the morning, kind of, you know, reset or I guess start the day off right, not really resetting, but starting the day off right. And I would just pick stuff up as I go. And it's not like there 
there's a lot of stuff to pick up. In fact, I'd take a whole bag with me and if I had a handful at the end of it, I would be surprised. But you'll see people doing that almost every single morning, not to mention the community as a whole, making sure that they're combing our beaches and making sure that they are cleaned up because we are a tourist town or at least every town in our little scope that we touch is uh, affiliated with tourism in some way. And sometimes people, they don't take care of other people's beaches like they would take care of their own hometown. And that's all right. That's why we take care of them. But that means that our beaches are always powder white. It is always soft. Like as soon as your toes hit that, you're going to want to take your flip flops off and start walking in it and just moving your, wiggling your toes around in it. It is so soft and it doesn't get overly hot either. You know, you go to a lot of beaches, you take your flip flops off and you're like, oh no, nope, putting those back on because this feels like fire. Nope, not here. Even in the hottest of temperature, the sand is nice and cool. Or in the hottest temperature, it'll be a little bit warm, but for the most part, it is considerably cooler than the outside temperature. And I know I mentioned hiking a little bit earlier, and sometimes I get weird looks from people hiking. Now, we don't have hiking like you would up in the mountains. We're not going to have a ton of elevation changes, but we do have a little bit of elevation change. But overall, there are a ton of different hiking trails. In fact, I go to a place right here uh, near, my, near my house, just a few miles away, and they have something like 30 some odd miles of recreational kind of biking, hiking trails. And then they've got just this huge, I can't even tell you how big it is. It's, it's got to be 30 miles in just one little patch of itself that I go out there, I take my Jeep, you know, I'll find a nice little uh, trail somewhere that, that isn't traveled on all that much and just go wandering around. It is such a good time and it really clears your head. And for those of us that like doing a little bit of hiking, it's an all around good time. And speaking of off-roading vehicles, yes, I take my Jeep and I beat the crap out of it at some of these different trails. One of my favorite places to take the Jeep out on is Blackwater River State park they have so many trails i've been out there probably 50 times and i still don't recognize a single trail there are that many every single time we go out there we've got somebody that's got a good gps got a good map of the area and they kind of take us out there's good mud holes to hit there's some good you know rock climbing a little bit if you know what that is on a jeep like there are just a ton of different things to do it's very very diverse and if going out in a Jeep isn't your thing, you could also go out in a you know dirt bike or a quad or those razor things, which are super, super fun. Or of course, if none of those really interest you, you've got camping, you've got fishing in freshwater, you know, lakes and rivers and creeks and things like that. And then of course you can go kayaking. And one of my favorite things is tubing down the Blackwater River. This is literally exactly what it sounds like. I take a tube, a bunch of buddies, we get a floating cooler that sits in the middle of all of us. We like link up and we just float down the river you know, listening to some good tunes and enjoying each other's company and of course the amazing Florida sun. And for those of you that like hunting, we have that out here as well. So you're not going to have to go very far to hunt this. I mean, it's Florida. It is an outdoor haven. The outdoorsman is going to love it here because they're very lenient on so many different things and they offer a ton of opportunities almost everywhere you go here in the state of Florida. And then, of course, I alluded to this earlier, we've got all the obvious stuff, the boating, jet skis. Jet skis are such a good time. If you guys come down here just to visit or, or you're moving down here, what have you, I highly suggest you take a day and get like a two-hour jet ski ride. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. Two hours is fine. I like doing it for a little bit longer than that, um, but they're so much fun. They go like 70, 80 miles an hour, just flying across our sands. And then of course you can go to the beautiful famed Crab Island, which is one of the most popular spots here in our area. You take the jet ski out there, you you know, kind of set it up and go, go to one of the bars. They have floating bars, like floating bars and restaurants, even a floating convenience store out there. So if you forgot, you know, a, a, a sunproof shirt or sunblock or a bottle of water or something like that you can go over there and do it and of course if you bring kids with you they've got like a floating bounce house castle style thing where it's like a bunch of different little obstacles so point of this is you can take the jet ski out you can go tooling around go check out the different beautiful homes on the water which is one of my personal favorites to do or of course you could just see how fast you can take this thing and jump little tiny waves and just relax at Crab Island, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, one of the other things that really surprised me about moving here to Florida was the wildlife. So let's touch on that for a second. And I'm going to start a little bit different than I normally start. I'm going to start with some cons because wildlife isn't exactly my favorite thing. Okay, we have tons of wildlife. Lots, lots and lots and lots of wildlife we have. 
plants that don't grow anywhere else in the country or world as far as I'm aware of. I just found this out recently. I was going out hiking and I met this lady and she was like, oh, we have all these carnivorous plants that like don't exist anywhere else. It's so cool. We've got like 50 species or something crazy. So we've got a ton of unique things. But with that means we also have to deal with those unique things from time to time. So let's start with the one that we get the most questions on and that's alligators and snakes. Yes, we have gators and we have snakes. I've seen a few snakes since I've been here mowing the lawn, little garden snakes, you know, water snakes, things like that, but nothing crazy. So let's just go ahead and get rid of the snake conversation because it's, it's just pretty rare. Now, gators. People think when they move to Florida, they're just going to be seeing gators everywhere. They see a few videos of a gator walking across, you know, a, a, a street or a main road or something like that. And they think, oh man, this is everywhere. You hear on the story of a gator taking a dog or, you know, there was an incident not too long ago of it taking a child, like not cool. It obviously has happened before, but it is so ridiculously rare. It's insane. In fact, I can name on one hand the amount of times I've seen a gator in my entire life here in Florida. And on one hand, I'm not kidding. I've seen one at a golf course. I've actually seen two at two different, like one at two different golf courses. And then I've seen one at a place called Fud Puckers, which is a restaurant where they have gators. They basically have a moat that goes around it and you walk over this moat to go inside of the restaurant. It's a tourist attraction and they have gators sitting out there. And then they'll walk around with these little baby gators, you know, that their, their mouth is closed. So they're not going to bite you or nothing, but they're real tiny. They're maybe, you know, a foot long or something like that. That's it. That's the only time I've ever seen a gator out here. So it is wildly unfounded when people are like, oh, what about gators? What about gators? They're going to take my dog. They're going to take my baby. They're going to, you know, be in my pool. Like this doesn't happen. Yes, you see pictures once in a while, but like if you really do a Google search to see how often they're seen, it's pretty rare. Oh, that's not 100% true. I did see one at Blackwater River State Forest one time. One time I saw one sitting on the bank um, and he wasn't a very big one and he was just sort of relaxing in the shade um, and we just kind of floated right by him. It wasn't a big deal. But other than that, that's, that's really it with the gators, guys. Now, bugs. This is uh, the con that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I don't, I'm not a big fan. I'm just not a big fan of, of some of the bugs. There's one, just it's one bug in particular that I don't like and it's called a palmetto bug. Now, for anybody that don't know uh, what a palmetto bug is, it is a roach. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, I'll argue till I'm blue in the teeth. People will argue back with me and they're like, that's not a roach. It's a palmetto bug. It's more like a beetle or something like that. I don't care. It's gross looking, okay? If you want to see a grown man freak out, get me near a palmetto bug. I have actually had, uh, we had to kill one here in the office not too long ago. And one of the girls, uh, one of my employees actually got rid of it for me because I'm like, I'm, I don't want to, I'll do it. I will eventually do it. But I'm going to I'm gonna give a little bit of a fight because I don't want to get near them. I just don't like them personally. And they are they are here. Like, you're going to see them. Um, I get my house sprayed. I get the office sprayed. And still, occasionally, they sneak in. And they don't sneak in because your house is dirty or anything like that. So they do act a little bit differently than a roach. And they don't populate like roaches do either. But they do get in your house just like a gecko would. So if you don't like geckos, geckos are going to get in your house too or... I think they're called geckos, yeah, those little tiny, uh, doesn't matter. They are going to get into your house from time to time. You just have to know that going into it. You have to know that you'll see one from time to, especially if you're sitting outside, sometimes you'll see them walking around in the grass and things like that. It is pretty rare. I see five a year maybe, but I do not like it when I see them personally. So if bugs bug you, if bugs bug you, then uh, just keep all of that stuff in mind. Get your house sprayed and you generally won't have to deal with it. Inside of my home, I see maybe one a year, um, if that, and, uh, and, and that's really it. But we do have mosquitoes as well. Um, I'm very fortunate. I don't generally get eaten up by mosquitoes too much. I'm saying this as I have a small mosquito bite on my arm right now, which is rare because I just went tubing, so one got me. But it is pretty rare for me. But I do know people that get eaten up by the mosquitoes fairly decently. And our mosquitoes here are about the size of pterodactyls. They're huge. They're not really that big. They're like, you know, decent size. But you have to know that they are here. So just make sure you keep some bug spray around and you won't really have to worry about it. What I do personally or what I should do when I go out tubing or kayaking or something like that is just put a little tiny spray on each of my wrists and at my ankles. And that's that's enough to keep them completely off of me the entire day, as long as it's like not more than like a four hour day out in the sun. Oh, and I forgot to mention this and I, I have to bring it up. I am going to circle back a little bit. Those palmetto bugs that I talked about before, they fly. 
forgot to tell you that little portion. These terrifying creatures fly, so good luck. Uh, but really, you barely see them, but they do fly. So outside of that, we've got some pretty cool wildlife that are just really awesome to look at. Obviously, we have all the fish and the water style wildlife sharks and fish and stuff like that. And I'll touch on sharks here in just a second, but I want to go into some of the cool stuff that people like seeing. And some people like seeing the sharks too. Like they're not near as terrifying as a lot of people think. You know, Jaws really messed us up on our ideas of sharks, at least the sharks that we deal with here in the Gulf of Mexico. But we've got some pretty amazing sea turtles that sometimes we get to watch them actually come out into the water. Um, and we take precautions and stuff. So by the way, if you guys are ever here as a tourist and you dig a big hole, you will see tourists, or you'll see a local come behind you and dig in that hole. That's because the sea turtles will get stuck in the hole. So stop putting holes at our beaches, guys. We gotta fill those back in. But that's what they'll do is they'll, they'll come out and you'll see the little tracks in the morning if you go walk the beach. And if you get out there early enough, you'll actually see some of them migrating into the water. It's pretty cool. Because the sea turtles come up on shore, lay all of their eggs, bury it, and then go out and I think continue their life. I'm not really sure what the sea turtle's life looks like. But outside of that, we also have amazing fish that people really love going to see and snorkel. And we've got great snorkel spots. In fact, we'll literally sink boats out in there so that it will create an artificial reef. Apparently, this is good for the environment. When I first heard it, I was like, that sounds terrible. You're just going to leave a boat out in the middle of the ocean somewhere. No, nope. apparently it's very good. It creates an artificial reef creates a haven for a lot of wildlife to survive and hide from other predators. And you can go down there and actually go into si inside some of these boats and go snorkeling around it or scuba diving and things like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's not my thing. I don't like being underwater personally. I've got a little bit of a thing against it, but a lot of people that do it, they really, really enjoy it. Okay. Let's talk on the sharks for just a brief second. I have seen more sharks than I have seen alligators. That is a fact. But the sharks will swim around you. They'll be in the same general area for the few times. I don't want you to think that every time you go to the beach, you sharks are swimming. They generally stay away from the people. Like It's not a target for them. We're too big for them to eat. They're looking for something they can eat. Just imagine you're out in the wild and you're looking for food. Are you going to grab the apple or are you going to grab like a woolly mammoth and try to eat that on your own, right? Without like a, a whole bunch of people trying to take it down to feed a village. Like they're just trying to get for themselves. They're not going after the giant target because it doesn't make sense for them. And they know, I would imagine they know it's a little bit dangerous. Yes, I know shark attacks happen. There's like seven shark attacks in this country a year or something like that. I don't know what the actual number is, so don't slaughter me in the comments or anything, but I know it is fairly low. So on the rare occasion that you do see a shark out there, they're very rarely around people. And when they are, they're, it's just not a target for them. So don't freak out. Sometimes I'll wash up on shore. That's actually been pretty cool. I watched a um, wildlife conservation team uh, take, a, take a shark that had washed up on shore. It actually just happened very recently. Again, I didn't see that one in person. I saw it a couple of years ago. And, you know, they're basically helping it get back into the water and all this other stuff. It's so funny when this happens because you'll watch videos. You guys can go out there and watch some of these videos if you haven't seen it already. Of just the people that are out there, the locals and the tourists, they'll actually drag the shark back into the water, let everybody know around, hey, there's a shark right here. You know, they'll drag it back into the water and let it go. And the shark literally just like gets in the water and just swims off just like it's nothing. So pretty cool. But we also have dolphins, which make up for any of the stuff that I just said that you might not like. So dolphins are awesome. You do these dolphin tours and you can actually go up on the boat and they suggest that you clap. They really like hearing the clapping. And when they hear all of that, especially a whole boat clapping, they'll go up next to it and do this and splash in the wake. And you'll see them kind of doing all these little things. It is such a cool time. And a lot of these dolphin watching tours will actually take you to snorkel and the dolphins will be out there just kind of swimming around as you're out there snorkeling or diving. And uh, that's always pretty cool. The next thing that really surprised me is the tourist atmosphere. So the area that I am in here in Florida is a Northwest, um, you know, the panhandle basically. And I didn't think that there was going to be this many tourists. I think of Florida and I think of like Orlando or, you know, basically South Florida as a touristy spot. But it's actually a very common area here in Destin, Florida in particular, in Navarre, even Fort Walton Beach, 30A. All of these areas are very heavy with tourists. Now, I thought I was going to hate this. In fact, in the beginning, I kind of did because they, they add a little bit of extra traffic to the commute, right? So I purposely picked where I was going to live based on where I was going to work so I could dodge some of this traffic because the traffic does or can get kind of bad, especially if you're living in like the Destin, Miramar Beach 38 areas. That's particularly where it gets the worst. 
but even then it generally doesn't add too much to your time. Every once in a while, it'll take a 20 minute commute and move it up to about an hour and a half. That's super rare. Most of the time it's gonna take your 20 minute commute and move it to like a 40 minute commute, which isn't fun. But tourists come with a lot of really good things. The most important one, I think, is that they help us with our taxes. So because we have all of the income coming in, the economy is stimulated from tourism, us that live here, that are residents of Florida, we don't have to pay any state income tax. Now, there is a very small subsection of like companies that have to. It's, it's a kind of a rare situation there. But for the most part, we don't have to pay any of that. So that's almost like a 7 to 8% increase. And on some of the states or some of the areas that you might live in, I've heard it's even higher, especially when you go further out west like California. I've heard some horror stories on how high the uh, state income tax is and then the sales tax, like don't get me started. But basically, because we have all of this great economy stimulated by the tourism, we get all of these breaks, which is really cool. So thank you, tourists. But tourists come with a really cool side effect for a lot of us that like people or like going out to meet people. Now, if you don't like that, you can just stay at home or not go to the populated tourist areas. But for those of us that actually like going out and meeting new people, talking to new people, that's one of the best things about the tourist season is that you get to go out there and there's just waves of people coming in and out every week and tons of new people to meet. And they're generally in a pretty good mood because, well, it's their vacation. So they're out here enjoying things. Now, occasionally you get the, you know, rotten apple that's just not having a good day. It rained on day two of their vacation and it should have been sunny the whole time and they're upset or whatever the situation is. But for the most part, people are in a very good mood here. That paired with the immense amounts of vitamin D from the sun just kind of lifts up your mood. And overall, my life, like my overall happiness here in Florida is so much higher because of these things, not lower. And one of the other things that was very surprising to me is regarding weather and seasons. Uh, I had a conversation with somebody not too long ago and they said, well, I couldn't live in Florida because I like seasons too much. I just love seasons. They kept saying how much they love the seasons. Listen, I get it. We love seasons too. That's why we get rid of the ones we don't like, the cold ones. We got rid of those, okay? We have winter for about three weeks here where it does get below freezing like two or three days a year, or five days a year, whatever the average is. I can't remember. And our springtime like right now is pretty good from January to like April. Um, it's been fantastic, especially this year. It's been so amazing. It's been nice and cool at night, nice and, uh, I guess, slightly on the warmer end of cool during the day, like 72 to 74, which has been awesome for the last couple of months. So you're going out, you're not sweating, you know, you're just enjoying the day and then it cools off at night. So if you're going to sit in the hot tub or sit outside a little bit, it just, it feels really good. So that's kind of the, the theme here is that well, we stick with the warmer months here. We stick with the warmer type of seasons traditionally. So my point with this is if you're the kind of person that when summertime hits, you just, you just don't want summertime to end. You want it to just keep going forever and ever. Well, you know exactly where you've got to go. It's Florida. Like we have summer and then not quite summer, but almost summer. Those are the two seasons that we have here. It's official. You, you can look that up in the dictionary probably. Whew. Okay, that was a mouthful. I hope this was helpful. These are the surprising things that I found out when I moved here. If you guys have any questions or something I didn't cover, please put it in the comment section down below. I read every single one of those and I respond back personally. And of course, if you guys are thinking about moving to the panhandle of Florida or really anywhere in Florida, we are real estate agents first. It's what this entire channel is about. So feel free to tap that subscribe button and then make sure you tap that little bell so that you'll be notified every single time we do a new video. We do video on our area, promoting the different cities or sometimes, you know, telling the truth about those cities. So we lay it all out. Uh, we lay it all out on the table here. We appreciate you watching and I will see you guys in the next one.